Today I'm going to show you how to speed up the process of creating interior elevations when you're dealing with a linked model. Hi everyone, I'm Berti with BIM Lounge, it's good to see you. Now, in one of my previous videos I showed how to automate the creation of elevations and I'll put a link in the description. But one day I was trying to apply the process to an interior design model based on an architectural model that was linked in. And it wasn't working unless I was creating my own rooms. And not only that, you may have noticed that when you're trying to create interior elevations in a model that doesn't have, for example, walls, ceilings, and floors, the crop of that interior elevation won't match the room and you find yourself dealing with these uh, huge crops that pretty much take up the whole building and then you have to customize them. So let me show you my solution. Let me show you my current file setup. To the left, I have the entry level, and this is a interior design model. And then to the right, I have an architectural model. And in the interior design model, I linked this architectural model. Now, the problem is that if you um, go to view and try to create an elevation, let's assume this is gonna be an interior elevation. You can, uh, for example, try to elevate that, and the default view is not reading the room. As you can see, the view extent is not optimized. And if you go to the view, of course, it's going to show the entire building. And the other downside is that you cannot automate the creation of elevations with the, the 22 room tools. For example, create rooms, see, or create views by rooms. As you can see, it doesn't give you a list of rooms. On the other hand, if you look at the architectural model, of course, you have control over all those geometries. And of course, I can come in with an elevation. Let's just use building elevation in this case, just to place it. And as you can see, the elevation, even though it's a building elevation, it's reading the room that is in. And if you head over to the actual elevation, you can see that the crop extent is actually reading the room itself. And that gave me an idea. Why can we automate the elevations in one model and then transfer them to the other? I know it uh, sounds a bit strange, but trust me, let's take a look at it and see if it works for you. The first thing I would do is to head back to the entry level model. And remember, in the architectural model, we did not have an interior elevation marker. And that happens a lot, especially if you have your own customized elevation marker. And as you can see, this one says interior elevation. And uh, what I would do right away is get one of those control C and head over to the architectural model and paste it. So now we have an interior model or an interior elevation marker in this model and whenever we create a new view it's available to us perfect now one thing i would recommend is and i'm sure you've noticed there are some linked models in here and the reading of the crop is not perfect because some of these models may not be aligned in terms of elevations and levels so let's go ahead and, of course, let's get rid of this elevation because we don't need it. It was just a test. What I'd like to show is that if you head over to Manage Links, you can actually unload the links just temporarily so they don't interfere with our elevations. Now, one thing to remember before using the 22 plugin is to make sure that the rooms are tagged on that floor. Now we're ready to use the 22 plugin, room tools, create views, and of course, as we expect, we have the entire list of the rooms. What I would say is that we could probably select you know, some of the rooms that may need a an elevation, for example, just let's keep it simple. Just imagine that this uh, makes more sense when you can scale it, when you have a lot of rooms and a lot of elevations, okay? So now elevations, this is where we can pick the interior elevation 
And at this point, let's take care of the naming convention and uh, I would typically leave that as none so that the name of the view drives. And this is the syntax that I would expect. Room name with uh, you know, A, B, C, D, depending on the direction. This will generate a few extra views than we need, but we can always delete later. So let's go ahead and create these views. And let's go check. And as you can see now, we do have those additional elevations. Now, the tricky part here is to transfer them to the other model. Now, the reason why I have the two models open at the same time, even though they're linked, is because I opened the local version of it. And I typically only do this when I do have to keep both models open at the same time so I can transfer items. Now, what I like to do in this case is go ahead and isolate these items. And the way I like to do it is, for example, I can select all these. Uh, I'm going to make sure that I grabbed everything I need. And then I can uh, go ahead and uh, isolate category. And at that point, as you can see, I can see all these elevation and it's easy for me to pick the right ones. Typically, you would want to copy all these elevations with the right extent. And actually, we haven't verified the extent. Let's go ahead and uh, do that right now. Reset. Want to make sure it's clear that the extent now still reads the room as we did for the, the sample or test elevation earlier. Perfect. Now, let's go ahead and uh, Isolate category. Great. So, it, you know, now it's easy to go in and say, okay, all of these are the elevations that I need. And you can obviously unselect these using the shift. We can hold shift down. And these ones are overlapping a bit, but I think that's a good selection. Okay. So, these are the interior elevations that I need to transfer over. Control C. And now if you head over to the other model, of course, the two models are in the same exact locations because they've been linked in properly. What I'll do is just delete this so we don't get confused. And at this point, I'm ready to head over to modify, paste, and I'm going to align, copy align to this room or this view. Now, what we notice is that, of course, the crop has been maintained. So now I don't have to go around each view and adjust the crop because sometimes you have this um, or you always have this crop that takes up the whole building and you have to zoom out and pull all the grips to make sure that the extent matches the room and now you have automated elevations or the creation of elevations within your live model now of course one last step that to me is critical that you take is assign the view templates. So let's go ahead and, and do that. I want to make sure that you remember to do that. See, these are the new elevations that came through and notice that they actually have the room name. So you don't necessarily have to tag the room in here. So let's go ahead and select all the elevations and then we can assign an interior elevations view template. And then and now when you go and check the elevation, that view template should contain all your uh, existing settings. And of course, this is not a perfect workflow because it would uh, do the bulk of your elevations, assuming that it would save you quite a bit of time. And then of course, if the architectural model or whatever model you have linked in updates, then uh, you could probably uh, take care of individual new elevations in your live model or redo this, you can totally do this again. Now, let me know what you think of the solution. And I know some of you may think that this is not the ideal way to handle elevations, but if you think about it, it can save you a ton of time. Now, let me know if you have any questions and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.